Bonjour à tous. Good morning, everyone. Uh, dans mon rêve, uh, je pourrais le faire le cours, uh, faire, mon, faire mon... See, now I'm going to prove my point. <laughs> uh, dans mon rêve, let me slow down. Dans mon rêve, uh, jamais je... J'avais aimé faire ce discours en français. Mais malheureusement, <laughs> mais malheureusement, je ne parle bien en français, as you saw. <laughs> so I'm going to return to English, and even though I've lived here for two years, I really wish I was stronger in, um, in French, uh, because it would be so lovely to be able to talk with you more in your native tongue, too. Uh, but as Antonin said, uh, I moved to Paris about two years ago, and it's been actually a remarkable uh, couple of years. I've got a chance to meet quite a few uh, entrepreneurs who live here and throughout Europe. And what has fascinated me is in the backdrop of all the things that have gone on here from Nuit Debout to uh, Charlie Hebdo, um, how many people are uh, looking for the innovation of Silicon Valley to be part of the solution? And as I've been getting ready to actually return back to Silicon Valley after two years, I've got this feeling in my gut that something is terribly wrong if Europe adopts Silicon Valley's metaphor for success. And Antonin and I have been talking about it for quite a while, and so he suggested actually that I share that with you. Um, so I'm not giving my standard talk. You can Google talks I've already given on collaboration to thousands of people uh, and see that because that content's there. We thought we would do something really special for this moment in time for what is it that Europe can do differently to actually use the model. Now, if said generously, you could say that what I'm about to talk about are myths that Silicon Valley sells to the rest of the world. If you're talking about it a little bit more harshly, you might call them lies, whichever you choose. In fact, what I want to just do is ask you to share with me what you think some of the stories are that are coming out of Silicon Valley, and I'm going to give you a chance to do that. And as that starts, I thought I would just share some headlines I found in the last few days. So what do you see? White men. <laughs> White men. Good one. What else? Sorry, what was the other one? Steve Jobs saved the company? Yeah. You guys are going to have to do a little louder. Heroes. Religion? Silicon Valley is religion. There you go. Shiny tech. Well, you guys exactly got to where I wanted to go, so thank you for that. Um, I'm going to share with you what I think are three. And the big theme you just caught on is the hero, the crown. I think one of the things we do is we say, hey, find the big idea, be the one to do it, and then garner all the revenue from it. And in doing so, we actually put a crown on the head. They're all interlinked myths, though. So if you don't understand all three, you might accept some of it as being valid, and then we end up in a place we actually don't want to be. So the first one is the find the big idea piece. Sometimes people call it the unicorn. And uh, I'm actually working on a book while I'm here. That's one of the projects I've been doing. And, uh, and studied over 300 entrepreneurs and people who are really making a huge dent in the world. And in learning their stories, one of the things that came up over and over again is how much their original effort started off as a side project. And for several years, in fact, was something that they didn't even think was going to go anywhere. 80% of the stories were little side projects that for one, two, three years, they just kind of kept chasing almost because they couldn't stop chasing it. And then it ended up growing because they found something that would pull them into the future. And so when we accept the mythology of find a big idea, I think the thing we actually deny is the idea that matters to us. And so if we're looking for the million dollar, billion dollar, trillion dollar idea, what about the thing that's in pain right next to us that we actually can notice and do something about? We might ignore that. And in fact, every company that we celebrate today I, I'm sort of amazed at how much we don't understand the backstory. Google, which is one of the, the biggest companies in the world today, and certainly a giant, 
actually started off for many years in a lab at Stanford. They were called Backrub. They were going to license their technology. And they, that was it. They were done. Earn money. Good. Bye. And it grew and grew for what they actually thought was really interesting, which was how do you connect a bunch of other people's references instead of what a company wanted to promote. So if I link to you because I thought the idea was good, that's what was more interesting than an advertising kind of model. So the truth is that original ideas don't actually start out as big. They become big by what you do. First by what you notice and then what you're willing to act on. The second one is the one that we just pointed out of singular heroes. And in that set of pictures, also white men. So here's the funny part is we do this thing where we talk about the founders of Google and we ignore the other part of the story. So the person who actually did the license deal that actually drove the first seven years of Google's revenue model was a Hispanic woman. She doesn't show up in majority of the stories that are ever told about Google. I worked at Apple early on in my career. I actually picked apricots in the orchards that Apple's buildings was built on. Apple was one of the first companies I worked at. I ended up going there to many other web-related companies. And this is the Apple of my experience. It had a lot of difference in it, certainly not as many people of color as I would like, but at least it had women. And yet those women have been wiped out of the story entirely. And as you noticed in the Newsweek cover story, which they called the fathers of innovation, there are no women, there are no people of color, they've just completely obfuscated that. And a friend of mine who happens to be also an, a writer pointed out that sure, sure Newsweek, you can go ahead and say that, but that means that you're ignoring the CFO that made the company valid, you're ignoring the CEO that made Facebook profitable, you're ignoring all the engineers and business people who came alongside those teams. So the actual uh, truth of the story is that ideas may certainly be born of you, like in the Google case, but they grow through the power of us. And when we obfuscate that truth, then what we do is we ignore the people we need to build around us. We ignore the intimacy, as we talked about earlier this morning, that we need to have in order to trust one another in order to make an idea get bigger. And the third one is a direct lineage of those other two myths, which is, hey, if I'm the man, and I built it, then don't I also get to take home and garner all the rewards from it? Makes sense, right? If I'm the man on the front of the cover of the magazine, I'm the man. And I think that's actually the message that they believe, like truly, truly believe. And yet what I find so funny even about people in San Francisco and Silicon Valley is they'll say, you know, I invented the internet. I've actually had people say that to me. I've invented the internet. I'm thinking, you know, DARPA actually invented all the protocols that you have just figured out how to build on top of. SRI actually built a bunch of the technology that companies now use today. And those companies were funded by government money. So no one invented the internet all by themselves. And what that does, though, is that you can say, hey, man, I'm it. You can ignore everyone else. And this should worry us greatly. San Francisco pays for companies like Twitter to build buildings and asks them not to pay taxes. And yet all the streets of San Francisco are full of homeless people. You will go into a Starbucks to buy a cup of coffee and you will get chased in by a homeless person. It is not a pleasant experience, but those people are not doing it for torturing you, right? They're doing it because they have no other place to go because the government has failed them, the system has failed them, and then people write articles saying, I don't want to deal with homeless riffraff. I, as a tech person, who by the way, am working on important things like the internet, shouldn't have to deal with that. It is not, I wish I could say in this case, the truth was different, but I'm going to have to name this a wish more than a truth. In US, we do this thing of celebrating individualism, Silicon Valley especially, and they don't understand the plurality of how we actually get things done. So in French language, I think about as this the vu, not the tu, the vu, not the you. So at all times, vu is about both this, this idea of respect Right, so I will address someone more formally with a vu, so it's a sign of respect, but it is also a sign of the plurality. So I can use the same word. And this is what I think is the best thing about the European culture. And if you accept what Silicon Valley sells, 
you're denying your absolute strength and what will actually make it wonderful for you to do innovation here, but in your own way, in a more connected and collaborative way. So I want to just wrap with this idea. Let's find a new way to be, a new how. Certainly not the Silicon Valley way, because that is just a story that will end up with us leaving what is our strength. Instead of simply enriching the few, let's find a way to build something even better, more about prosperity and less about wealth, so we can have a society and a community that benefits us all. Individually, how we hold ourselves so we allow ourselves the benefit of the idea that matters to us, building the community around us who will make that real, and I'm looking at a whole room of people who've made WeShare real, and to actually figure out how to serve society, not to block it off and sit in a bus far away from it. So that's what I wanted to come and share with you this morning, and I hope that it's useful for this community. And we're also going to be around to have conversations for the rest of the day. And so I, I hope you guys will help me um, take this myth and a uh, set of myths and trash them, and maybe figure out ways that we can actually find a way to move it into reality. How's that? Yeah. Merci.